bullet ant. <laughs> Executioner wasp. Oh, wow, actually. Greater banded hornet. Oh, <laughs> what do all of these animals have in common? Incredibly potent and painful stings. Often when we think of stinging animals, the species that come to mind are things like wasps, scorpions, and ants. And it makes sense. Some of the most painfully stinging animals on Earth belong to these groups. Trust me, I would know. My name is Jack, and I've dedicated my entire life to traveling all over the globe to find the strangest and most dangerous animals alive. I'm willing to get in close where others wouldn't dare in order to uncover and share the truth about even our most feared and misunderstood creatures. Today I'm on the hunt for one of the most painfully stinging animals on Earth, but there's something different about today's target. It's not an insect or arachnid, and it just might be the last thing you may have expected to have such a potent sting. So basically, it looks really, really good for platypus dens down here. We had a little bit of rain, so this creek is kind of engorged, kind of swollen. I'm hoping that that doesn't affect us today. Perhaps it could work in our favor. It's a much cooler day than when we came out here last to look for these and didn't find any. Um, this water I felt feels cooler with that rain rainwater that came down. And I've got a feeling that tons of insects and aquatic invertebrates have maybe gotten kicked up into the water column. And hopefully our platypus friends are wise enough to take advantage of that. But uh, we haven't seen anything yet. We're gonna keep looking, of course, because we can get a platypus. I'll be a very happy jack. It may surprise you to know that these little mammals are quite small on the mainland of Australia, with average adults being around 12 to 18 inches long. This can make spotting them quite difficult. Luckily, being mammals, they breathe air. So if one is out feeding, we should have a good chance of spotting it as long as we stay focused and keep our eyes peeled. I, I could be looking for an animal maybe less than a foot long here. So any little ripple, any little bits of bubbles, any tiny quiver in the reeds, any little bit of movement on the bank could be our target. So I've got to have my keen eyes out because I do not want to miss the opportunity to show you all truly one of the most special mammals in the world. After hours and hours of searching, I was beginning to lose all hope. Was this venture in vain? Was my dream of seeing a platypus in the wild simply that, a dream? I made one last ditch effort to check another stretch of creek when I spotted some reeds moving on the opposite side. I had finally found one. I swear I just saw Bill. I swear I just saw Bill. <gasps> no way. Just over there, folks. I'm gonna keep this short because I'm about to go grab my big camera. But just over there, tucked into those grasses, I am 99% sure that we have a platypus. <laughs> okay, okay. I gotta keep an eye on where he went. I'm gonna go grab the big camera and see if we can get some close footage of this guy. He doesn't seem to be bothered by us. I still see some grasses moving. I'm gonna get the camera because we gotta get a closer look. <gasps> I cannot state enough how much of a dream come true it was to finally see this iconic species in the wild. As a kid, the monotreme group fascinated me beyond measure. And to now have seen a platypus and an echidna in the wild just feels unreal. Now, somewhere back there, that beautiful platypus is sifting through with that sensitive electrosensory bill for all sorts of little aquatic insects, small crayfish, worms, and things like that. 
these lovely little creatures, despite living most of the time in fairly murky water, like the water behind me here, are able to easily adapt to feed without use of their eyes. In fact, these lovely little platypus here, they completely close their eyes and they pick up on the electrosensory currents, on the electric currents that, that small animals put out. So in fact, they shut those eyes and they feel around. They pick up on those light little zings and pings of electrical uh, fields that surround our aquatic insects and crayfish and worms and things like that. And then they'll grab that prey item and they'll bring it back up to the surface where they'll mash it up in between those lovely little bills there before they eat it. Now these are really, really, really special animals, folks. They are monotremes and are one of only a few animals left on Earth that are both mammals and lay eggs. Now, we can assume that dotted all along the sides of this creek are tiny little burrows that these lovely animals take shelter in when conditions aren't just right. We have actually been out here before looking for platypus and absolutely got skunked. We did not see a single one. It was pretty warm, it was very sunny. These animals during the summer, they don't like to come out when it's super boiling hot. They have that thick coat of hydrophobic fur that helps keep them insulated and warm and also keeps them able to zip through the water with little to no resistance. Now, of course, this, this downy coat of fur takes a lot of upkeep. So as we've watched this platypus kind of come through as it's feeding, as it's foraging, it spends quite a lot of time scratching and, and combing that hair, keeping it all straight, keeping it all good, so that it continues to serve that amazing purpose as a powerful adaptive tool to their survival. Now, their unique bill and aquatic lifestyle aren't the only unique adaptations these animals have developed. The males are also equipped with venomous spurs. These sharp tooth-like spurs are located on the back feet and are used primarily to spar with other males for territory. They can, on occasion, use these spurs in defense, which is how we know that these animals produce one of the most painful stings known to man. Although this does not happen often, every once in a while someone will go to pick up a platypus that has found itself out on land, and they receive a nasty injection. The sting itself has been described as excruciating, and could be among one of the most intense and painful experiences a person could go through. The venom is incredibly localized, which can make painkillers ineffective. The pain can last for days, and the affected area can swell and inflame quite a bit. But luckily, the venom is not believed to be lethally dangerous to humans, and does not cause systemic reactions throughout the body. These little mammals are so unbelievably strange, and although this venomous spur would seem quite out of place on most species, it makes perfect sense that an animal as bizarre as the platypus would have this weapon in their arsenal. Now that's fascinating, folks, because generally we don't think of a venomous sting coming from something like a mammal, coming from a platypus. We think of stings, you know, and venom injection as something that maybe insects and, you know, wasps, ants, and maybe even reptiles like snakes will do. But we don't typically think of mammals having the capability of venom. Now platypus are not the only mammals that are venomous, but they are one of the most venomous mammals on Earth which makes them extra spectacular. There's just so many novel things about the evolution of the platypus. They're not only monotremes that lay eggs, but they also have partially sprawled limbs, which is a characteristic of reptiles. They, are, they don't have proper nipples either, folks. They're mammals and they're nippleless. I don't know about you and me. I'm a mammal, I've got nipples. Dogs got nipples, cows got nipples. Heck, even a kangaroo has nipples inside that pouch. But the echidna and the platypus, they are completely nipple-less. So you're saying, well, hang on, Jack. Isn't a qualification for being a mammal nursing your young with milk? Yes, it is, folks. I didn't say that their mammary gland was absent. These lovely platypus and their cousins, the echidna, secrete their milk from the glands underneath them. And the babies 
suck it off their mother's belly. No nipple required, which is absolutely fascinating. These are such interesting mammals and a really cool insight into perhaps how maybe some early mammals started to evolve and what they looked like. Because this is certainly a primitive lineage that luckily still has a very strong and stable foothold here in Australia. Of course, these lovely animals are protected and it would be illegal for me to go out of my way to test the sting of a platypus. Although I'm quite curious to know what the devastating effects of their venom feels like. For now, I'll just stick to my insects and arachnids, and perhaps someday in the future, an opportunity for me to find out more about this mammal's venom will arise. So take a look right there, folks. Oh, he just went under. This has been a dream of mine. For my entire life, platypus, echidnas, the monotreme group, has always been a personal favorite of mine. And you can see, <laughs> he heard me, I think. He splashed away. These animals are wickedly fast. They might seem a little primitive. They might seem a little small, but they still do so well out here because of niche specialization. If otters or other aquatic mammals lived out here, it's likely that the platypus would have been outcompeted and perhaps could have even become extinct like they did in many other places of the world where they lived in prehistoric times. But here in Australia, these are really the only animals exploiting this niche of, of aquatic insects, of worms and things like that here in the creek systems of Australia. So these animals have been able, despite some of their evolutionary setbacks, to do remarkably well. And that's why it's so important that we protect entire ecosystems when we're talking about conservation. Because some of these animals have taken hundreds of thousands and even millions of years to adapt and grow into their own habitats. And when those habitats start to shrink and start to go away and start to be destroyed, these animals, they have nowhere else to go and they can't adapt to another lifestyle. But we're so happy to have seen wild platypus. I am beside myself, folks. If you love venomous animals, be sure to check out my recent video on the most venomous spiders on Earth. Take a deep dive into the world of deadly arachnids and see species you may never have even heard of. The link to this video will be available in the video description below. I hope to see you there. Oh my gosh, folks. I am literally on cloud nine. Yesterday, we filmed easily my biggest bird target, the cassowary, and today we filmed easily my biggest mammal target, the platypus. I really couldn't be happier, folks. I cannot believe the footage, I cannot believe the experience we just had, and I cannot believe that I had the opportunity to share it with you all at home. So my friends, that's really all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed getting to take a look at the iconic, the amazing, the well-adapted, and the adorable platypus. This has been truly one of the greatest wildlife experiences of my entire life. And I'm glad that you were able to join me on that as well. So thanks so much everyone for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And that's really all I've got for you. So uh, please, I'd like to see you next week with the next upload. But until then, take care of yourselves. And I hope to see you next time.